well, Netflix makes cultural content. And I think if you've ever looked for cultural content on Netflix, I, I see some heads nodding. You've been able to find yourself on Netflix no matter who you are. For us, I am both black American and then a half Brit. So chewing gum is there for me. Uh, starting with Kayla Coel, also written by her. For Baba, you are Indian Canadian, mm -hmm. and you have content there for you. Absolutely, yeah, in both directions, both Indian content and Canadian content. Kat, for you as well? Yeah, so I'm Filipino American, and there's a lot of movies and TV shows that feature both Filipinos and Filipino Americans, both in front of the camera and behind the cameras. So what we really like to do on Eco Riot is just talk about these things and kind of get into them. And we have some clips from some of the properties that we're going to show you. And um, I'll just cue those in when they come up organically in the conversation. So uh, ladies, Netflix for the culture. Um, as we said, uh, there's so much international content. I'm always able to talk to people about it. And so we wanted to get into some specific properties that make us happy and uh, get us going. And I think we'll start with you, Kat. What is um, some of your favorite content? On Netflix. On yeah. Netflix, yeah, definitely on Netflix. <laughs> I really wanted to um, get into it. So before, the only Filipinos that I saw when I was growing up, I had to watch the Filipino channel, where it's like, special, you have to pay for it, and like seeing like, Filipino that talked in English was like seeing a unicorn <laughs> to me. Like I'm in my 30s and I'm just seeing all of this now. And it's different and special in a way where you're able to see yourself on screen. So some of the ones, I'm more of a romantic, so I like rom-coms, And but there's also for other people as well, you got your historical dramas, you've got really violent action films too, if, you, if you're into that. Um, one of the ones that I saw, like, um, Can't Help Falling in Love is a rom-com for my, for my favorite. It's like the Brad and Angelina, the Philippines. And, um, Tell us who they are. Oh yeah, it's uh, Catherine Bernardo and Daniel Padilla. So they, yeah. They and is the movie in Tagalog or yeah. Yeah. English subtitles? Yeah, so it's in Tagalog and it's like English subtitles and the uh, company that Netflix uh, partnered with is ABSCB, and they're really good with doing the titles. Sometimes you watch. Um, like that's not know. what they said, right? You're yeah, like, that's like, not no, that's not what they said. <laughs> and it's great for my daughter because she's in the audience and she doesn't understand Tagalog very well, um, and she, we both can follow along, so she can read along with the subtitles, and I can listen. So let's let's take a look at um, let's let's take a look at a clip from Can't Help Falling in Love right now, and you guys can get a better feel for it. Soon. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> so, Kat, what does it mean to you? Um, and like you said, I know you talked about having content for your daughter, but like you've grown up without it. So how does it feel to finally see it and to be able to share it with people like me? You've shared this couple with me. I've now become fans of them. What is that like? Um, it's, I don't want to say it's almost too little, too late. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's, it is something where I finally like this world that I was always a part of and now everyone gets to include people in it and not have to like go to the video store and like try and get the person to like get the, the tape or it's it's these communities that people don't know. Like it's and um, unless you're not a part of that community, you don't you don't understand as well. Yeah. yeah. But I think that the really amazing thing for me is that it's a bridge builder. Um, you know, we're getting to understand each other better and getting to see the ways that we're all connected because I think we forget that so many things, like, I mean, like, in all of our cultures, because because I also have a Caribbean background, rice is big, right? You know, that's like a staple. And I think um, there's, there's more things like that. There's festivals that we all share from Carnival to Mardi Gras, to Holi, you know? And, and this is an amazing thing where we, we kind of come together. So there's one clip that you asked for, Kat, that I think really illustrates that, especially from a hyphenate standpoint, us being hyphenate culturally, all three of us. I think that this clip kind of gives you guys a great feeling for it, and that is a clip from Joe Coy. Oh yeah, can you tell us about him? Oh, so Joe Coy is a Filipino-American uh, comic. I think he was in uh, Last Comic Standing. And um, he tours all over the US um, as well. And they're usually sold, sold out by the time I like, find out about it. And he appeals to um, everyone. It's not just like Filipinos and Filipino-Americans. It's sort of like um, uh, Fluffy, too. Where <laughs> I remember that day. I'm going to teach you how to make rice. And this is the only time I'm going to teach you. <laughs> okay? How do I do it? You take a couple scoops of rice, Joseph, put it in the pot. Put water in the pot, squish it around. Clean the rice like that. If the water's cloudy, the rice is dirty, pour that water out. Put more water in there, squish it around. Squish it around. If the water's still cloudy, the rice is dirty, pour that water out. Continue the process, Joseph, until the water is clear. When the water is clear, add water. It's ready to cook. <laughs> well, how much water do I add? Just fill it to this line right here, Joseph. <laughs> this is how you cook perfect rice. I want the world to know that right now. Yeah, I think um, 
from a, a, a Canadian American perspective, we get a lot of programming, American programming in Canada. Uh, so, so Netflix, in that sense, wasn't um, illuminating from a cultural exchange, a Canadian American. Although there are some shows, but it's more from the, the Indian programming perspective. Um, uh, very similar to to Cat. Like I was um, less than two when my family immigrated to to Canada, and um, usually India is associated with Bollywood. Yeah. And so uh, the way that I learned Hindi was through Bollywood movies. And at that time, it was uh, VHS rentals and, yeah. and things like that. Um, but what, what Netflix has allowed is uh, many of those movies are now available on Netflix, so the classics. So I think it's wonderful that it brings in another generation so families can sit together and share older Bollywood movies that our parents enjoyed or our grandparents enjoyed, and now I can sit with my family and enjoy with Jeevan. But at the same time, it's also offering contemporary Indian uh, programming from the subcontinent, so one can see how the country has evolved over time. I think one of the challenges uh, with immigrant communities, or certainly my experience, is that when you, when you move to a new country, you can often be fossilized yes. in the time and the culture from when you left or when your parents left, and people forget that as everything times change and the cultures move on and so forth and for a long time we didn't have access to see how India has changed um, but the new new programming that Netflix allows us to see in India that is still very much Bollywood and contemporary Bollywood like you can see some of the latest movies and they're wonderful and uh, song and dance and all kind of uh, but new um, ways of filming and editing, so animation is included, and uh, visual special effects and all that kind of stuff. But also beyond Bollywood, a different kind of programming that is grittier and um, uh, swear words and kissing, oh my god, kissing. and full on, full on kissing and lips. <laughs> Intercourse, oh my god, how did this country become so populated? Um, <laughs> so, so all of that is there, and one example of that is a, a Netflix series uh, that came out recently um, called Sacred Games, and um, I binge watched it um, because I just I couldn't believe that this was being projected. Right? And it starred um, <coughs> Saif Ali Khan, mm -hmm. in, who is a very big Bollywood actor. Yeah, I have to tell you, I got the, the trailer for Sacred Games, and I'm watching it, and I'm watching it, and I was like, wait, is that Saif? Yeah. I think that's like because he is such a big like Romeo type exactly. romantic Bollywood lead. You're you're not used to seeing him in this kind of. It's almost like the Narcos of India. Well, right? and his character is a turban Sikh. Yes, as the lead. So I mean, even for India, talk about <laughs> diversity. I mean, that's been a conversation in North America recently with white Oscars and all this kind of stuff. But in India, the Sikhs, my community, uh, they are a minority. 2% of uh, India's population is Sikh. And so to see um, a Sikh projected as the, the main lead, turbaned, everything, that was also really, really wonderful. Yeah, I think the world needs to know how sexy Sikh men are. Oh, they are. And and so, yes. Yes. <laughs> and so now we're finding out. Yeah, we're seeing them up on um, Times Square and billboards and yes. stuff like that. So this was definitely one. Um, and we can prove it oh. because we have clips. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so we can roll that clip too.
Yeah, I think they're starting to film in September of this year, so that's exciting. Yeah. And I have a personal story before we go on. Oh, please, I mean, yeah. So um, just again, on the, the topic of building a bridge and of sharing, my mother is from England. She grew up in Paddington. And one of the things she used to do is sneak off from school and go watch Bollywood movies, right? So that's how she could pull so these were these were things that she loved, but when she moved to America, there was nothing. Yeah, really big in um, in England because of course India is a communist country. Yes. So you can go to the theaters and see Bollywood films and now war films, but she couldn't share that with me. One of her great loves, she couldn't share it with me. We couldn't get it anywhere. And then one day, um, as this content began to come to Netflix, uh, she was able to show me the Oh yeah. And I was in love. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I again, that's that's really what this panel is about: is of the way that our cultures come together, and the way that um, uh, streaming platforms like Netflix really help us to see each other and to to fall in love with each other in a lot of, of great ways. But please. Yeah, I I discovered uh, Joy Choi through Netflix, and so you know it's access to to different kinds of culture. Um, you know, the Indo-Canadian thing, like taking ca Canadian content out. Um, Russell Peters is yeah. another very famous um, Canadian uh, comedian. I don't know why, oh, there's so many Canadian comedians, but yeah. there are, Russell Peters is one. And his shtick, um, he's been around for a really long time, mm -hmm. is, is, is a lot of cultural content and accents, Filipino he's accents, so Indian, he's so good. Um, but he was in a Netflix produced series recently called The Indian Detective, mm -hmm. and it went back and forth between India and Canada. So again, for somebody sitting in India that has access now to um, Netflix, they can see Canada, what is, what is Canada in a, in a contemporary way. So I think um, some other comedians like uh, Netflix um, brought, brought to us uh, a comedian called Veer Das, who, if you haven't seen him, I, think I highly recommend him. He's really funny. And because he's on Netflix, he can say things on Netflix that he cannot say on an Indian platform. Yes. And one of those things is, for example, his comedy is very critical of the Indian government. Um, with Modi in charge, uh, it's, it's moved very much to the right. and been accused of being a Hindu fundamentalist and so forth, which I agree. But, um, so in India, Modi was just elected again, um, uh, you know, it's the first time where he, his party could form a majority without a um, coalition, and now it's happened twice, so he's very, very popular, so you, it's very hard to criticize him in India, so the platform allows you to do that. Um, a, a comedian from here, Hassan Minaj, who some of you may have seen his Patriot Acts, uh, amazing series, um, and, and that is now available as content wherever net uh, flex streams, like in India. And he's saying things that are very critical of India and Saudi Arabia, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. So I think as a platform, it also provides um, a, a place to say things about your culture and your country's politics, um, even though you might, I mean, Hassan Minaj talks about India, he's not Indian, he's American, right? But, uh, so it allows you to do that. And then, um, yeah, one more, more example is a, a movie that I saw about uh, prostitution in India, filmed in Bombay. And again, it's just a different side of India that's not, um, ever shown in Bollywood and so on, but very real. And it's uh, called um, Titli and um, Lakshmi, uh, Tikli and Lakshmi Bomb, which is, uh, again, another movie I really recommend about um, poverty, women, struggle in a big urban society, and still very much 21st century. Yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, we do have a clip of that movie we'll in a second. I hadn't seen it, so um, once you recommended it, I kind of had to go dig into that because I think that going back to kind of the shiny, happy content that we so often get.
some countries around the world, we don't realize that there's there's other sides um, that um, we're all kind of facing these various issues coming from various leaders. Um, I don't know why, but England decided that they needed a bad-haired, um, ignorant person as well. I thought that they were like America. The Americans got one. Let's get us one. Um, and so you know you. You kind of um, you, you kind of really have to see um, through some of these independent films and independent productions um, the, the the true to life uh, struggles in various countries and, and and kind of increasing awareness there. I don't know if Kat, you've seen any. So um, there's one with uh, and they're all female driven too. So um, like by bus. With uh, Duterte's war on crime. Oh gosh. And um, also, they have Netflix with Ammo as well. That's a TV series coming out of the Philippines because it's so rampant the um, drugs there. Because it's if you see these uh, political campaigns, a lot of them are fund funded by drug money. So um, it's it's very seeped into the culture. So. Um, well, let's take a look at um, Tiki and Lakshubha. Let's take a look at a, a short clip from that, because um, this goes in a completely different direction from anything we've seen yet today. So I'll give you guys another view viewpoint into the culture. सर पर दुनिया भर का प्रेशर है खुद को बेचती है खुद के बच्चों को बेचती है और दूसरे लोग उसकी कमाई का खाते हैं जिसे वो अपना समझती है ना वही चूस के सबसे ज्यादा वाट लगाते इतने सैकड़ों घर हर घर में सैकड़ों लोग हर इंसान के बड़े बड़े सपने सबका बोझ इस मुंबई पर Um, their lives were stolen from them, and 
for a lot of black Americans especially, this is a horror show. This is a four episode um, limited series. It is a horror movie for us because we are so very afraid of those we love being railroaded in much the same way. Uh, Trump actually put out an ad in um, the, I think it was the Times, asking for these boys to be executed. Um, and he's never apologized, and the Feinstein has never apologized. So um, seeing this, this is Ava DuVernay's finest work ever. It has been nominated for a number of Emmys. I cannot watch it more than once because I just break down. And um, in this scene that you're about to see from when, I, when they see us, um, Gerald Jerome, who is the young actor that plays Corey Wise, who is who the, uh, Corey Wise is the one of the exonerated five that this series focuses on. Um, uh, Gerald Jerome does an incredible job, so much of an incredible job, that he plays Corey from 14 all the way up to about 30 something. Uh, imagine that. One actor, and this scene coming up is he and Niecy Nash, uh, who you will know from comedy, but is proving herself to be an extraordinary dramatic actress as well. Um, hold your tears to the end. Uh, this is when they see us.